and welcome back again um, this is the Piaggio Deisis 100cc two-stroke build um, but I wanted to have a quick chat about the um, the summer really I I focused a lot more on my channel and my bikes this summer so I had um, kind of four weeks off ish a bit less um, where I got to focus more on the channel and the bike builds and so on and I've really enjoyed it I've really enjoyed it it I think it's something I would love to do a bit more because um, at the moment I when it comes to the winter for example I, I lessen up you know I can't do as much we got that big Honda built quickly it was built within a week actually um, because I was on top of my game I got parts ordered ASAP and so on and we got that done quick and to be fair when we got the ignition set for this and, and bits of spray paint we got this done quick as well so yeah it's been really nice focusing on the channel and the bikes uh, the channel pay I know some of you are interested in the YouTube stuff um, at the moment each video gets kind of an automatic four or five hundred I basically don't upload my next video until it's at four or five hundred that's kind of how I work at the moment because I know there's much more of you out there um, so of four or five hundred um, I try and do four a week um, on average at around 20 minutes long each and that brings in between 90 and 120 pounds uh, depending on how busy you guys have been actually um, the last one so even though I worked my ass off this summer the last pay from YouTube was 91 pounds um, and it's all about interaction and I'm, I'm not having a go at people I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of teaching you guys who are interested in this how it works so it's all about interaction so if 500 people watch your channel but 20 or 30 click the like button which is what happens on my channel um, the channel loses out really so if 500 people watch 500 people ideally should click the um, the up button of course if they're not valuing the work or they disagree with the work they cannot click or they can click the down button there's no huge issues there um, it's all good uh, kind of it's all good for the YouTube algorithm let's be honest but um, that's how it works and if the same 500 people drop the comment no matter how silly it seems like thank you or well done or if they asked a genuine question that also affects the algorithm so I'd be interested to see if more of you who are listening to me now could click the up button and, and drop a comment make sure You've, you've liked and commented. I'd be curious to see if the money goes up or if the money is specific to the adverts. That will be interesting. Um, but yes, it's been. An, I've really enjoyed my summer. I've got to admit, I de-stressed quite a lot doing this. Um, I, uh, the last kind of few people who have joined my Facebook page have said that during lockdown they found my channel. Now that's really nice for me to hear because. I had this dilemma during lockdowns. I never, I was not part of any lockdowns, guys. I didn't have the luxury of um, of locking down, although I don't mean that in a rude way. I know that lots of people out there wanted to carry on. But what I mean is I, I got no break and I my job became very different. Um, I, again, I, you know, I don't ever talk about my job. But it became very different, very busy, very intense, even more so. So um, I didn't get any lockdown. And then when I came up to do my bikes to de-stress, I always had this dilemma of should I be? Lots of people are at home, um, not allowed to be out, and then I'm here. But then saying that, this is my area, this is my garage, this is my garden. Um, we share this area with... Uh, three other people actually this garage never opens I've never seen them no idea what's going on but the other two over there um, this is our area and that's it and then it, it's a fire escape for that building but they're not allowed to use this area generally so this is my garden so when I came up here and built my projects during lockdowns um, I was in my garden so it was all good but I'm really glad that some people have have got some kind of de-stressing 
out of my channel and they've got they've learned bits and pieces and they've got to interact with me and the others on my Facebook page there are some great guys on there some absolutely amazing guys and it's not just about the positivity because my channel is positive any negative and you're booted immediately it's about the the expertise um, and and the relationships so yeah um, this is kind of my last free day really I want to get this finished I really want to get this finished I picked up a bulb Halfords never used to sell these bulbs these are the old Piaggio bulbs and they um they used to cost 15 or 20 pound and you had to order them on eBay that was the only way to get them and uh, uh, you know sometimes they came broke because they were they've gone through the postage system but now Halfords had stocked that one so that's great news I'm gonna plug that in and make sure it all works and then if all the bulbing system works we can get the front of this bike put back together uh, we've got to drop the um, front wheel to put the mud guard on bit of a pain but worth doing and uh, then this bike's good to go the front brake light switch was a little bit temperamental last time it'll be this one here um, a little bit temperamental I'm gonna try and give that a bit of a clean I don't know if I did last time I'm going to try and give that a bit of a clean uh, because this bike kind of needs to be mot ball once it's all done and then it will be a uh, kind of, I don't know, I don't know I don't know what this bike would be priced at when done and dusted guys if I'm being honest it runs beautifully, it, right, it, it's quick the battery's brand new and I've just done the servicing work but I don't know what I'd value this at five, six hundred pound maybe a two stroke Anyway, um, let me get this bulb in and check that it works. That's an easy check, guys. You put the bulb in, you fire the bike up. The main beam should be on, and then you switch to the high beam, and it should switch over. Quite simple. So, the reason the mud guards, the wheel needs to be off is because it bolts up to the frame, the bottom yoke. It goes up here, in like that, and then it bolts up like that. You just can't get your hand in with the wheel on. It makes sense doing it this time. You do it once, do it properly. I'll give the forks a little bit of a polish up. Nothing major, just a quick polish. Um, I've checked the front light. High beam and low, it's working great. That's good. Indicators are all good. Still got that slight issue with the brake light, but I think it'll be okay. So uh, we're, nearly, we're nearly ready to go on this one. Let me uh, get this bolted up and on and uh, we'll see where we go from there so I generally tell you guys not to do it but I've taken this apart and cleaned it because it's it's ultimately very simple guys it's metal connecting to metal which makes the light come on you know let's be honest uh, so I think I believe that's cleaned up well I'm gonna be pressing this let's chick -chick -chick, and we're gonna be looking at the light there yeah that's spot on um, I mean, like, the reason I tell people not to do it is because there's a few parts in there. It's, you have to kind of know what you're doing. It's a little bit touchy, but when you know what you're doing, it's straightforward. It's two pieces of metal, one spring, and, and it's about connection. Uh, otherwise, for four or five quid, wait a couple of days and get one on order. That's, that's the alternative, really, and that's okay. Um, so that's good, the other one was working anyway. So at the moment we, we have front lights, indicators, brake lights, suspension. We have kind of the main bits we need for MOT at this stage, which is cool. Some of these kind of trimming bits I'm going to have to use cable ties. Um, it's just, it's been kind of but butchered in the past and there's no way around it really. We just got to do the best we can do. But it's kind of getting there it's looking like a bike and uh, it will do the basic things a bike should do look at Goldie beautiful bike ER5 perfect running order um, I've still got this advertised I'm still waiting I'm not getting much bite on this one I'm not getting much bite at all and uh, it's it's interesting it's weird um, this should be snapped up because there you won't, you know, you're never going to bump into anyone who has the same bike, basically. You're going to pull up anywhere and it's going to be like, wow, um, it's different. I should probably fix this indicator. I don't even know when that happened. 
There you go. I'll get a bit of blue tack on that layer. Um, yeah, I mean, look at it. Stunning. Right, where are we? Front panel on a couple more cable ties. I need to put the bolt in to pull the, the headlamp down. That's easy enough done. Middle panel I've got somewhere. Top panel I've got somewhere. Uh, we're well on our way, guys. Well on our way. So, here it is, guys. This is the final product. This is the Piaggio Diesis. 100cc two-stroke bike um, it's not a bad bike everything works now I've done pre MOT tests it should test it should pass but um, it's got imperfections and I'll kind of point them out to you I've had to use a few cable ties one here one here we've got this brake here that could have been repaired better but wasn't worth my time really um, this top panel is ruined, we've got this chip here and then you've got loads here, look. That's a big snapped part, there's no way of putting that together. I should probably use a bit of gaffer tape under there just to help keep some of the rain out. Little chip here. But apart from that, it starts, runs and rides. Um, I'll throw on the GoPro, I'll take you for a quick spin up and down these, uh, these roads just here. And we'll kind of see how it runs. I've just topped it up with fuel, so it's got that. It'd be nice to see if the speedo's working after taking the um, wheel off a few times and to see what kind of speed it does. The miles per hour is at the bottom. Um, anything over 30 is fine, really. So I'm going to check the tyres, just put some air in if needed, and take this for a basic run to see kind of what it does and if it stays running with the GoPro on.
smoking. Um, <clears throat> now you should have seen that run there on the GoPro. Uh, it wasn't as smooth as it looked. It needed kind of coaxing. It didn't like um, full throttle immediately. Yep, it it kind of needed coaxing, it needed to get up the revs a bit and then you could kick it in, but you could get full speed. So you gentle, let it pick up, and then you could coax top speed out of it, but that is extremely smoky. Now, I know that there's no oil within the petrol because I cleared it all out. So, what are we looking at next? Um, I don't know if the oil pumps are adjustable on these. I'm not sure if they are. It could be putting in too much oil, which is which is surprising. But um, people do adjust them if they are adjustable. Um, too much oil is better than too little, but you can't have it smoking like that, running around the street. Uh, the other thing is, it could be really coked inside, so it might need decoking. Two strokes, um, they put out a lot of crap, and the exhaust get kind of bunged up. Uh, I've only really done it once before where I tipped fuel in and set it alight and let it kind of do its thing but this exhaust looks too new to me to be like that and I don't know what the mileage is on this thing 17,000 kilometers which is what 12 no yeah I guess if if that was the original exhaust then it, yeah this kind of it would be uh, but for now, <coughs> I'd like to get it running a little bit smoother, which could mean less oil. So I'm going to have a little look under the seat and see if the um, the oil injection is uh, adjustable, basically. And if it is, we'll look at it. Oh, is there a hole down there? That was interesting. Oh, there is a little one there. And then there should be a water one underneath. Uh, there's a little, a tiny little hole. There guys, look at that. It's interesting. Um, them little holes on these bikes can make a big difference, so I am going to bung that up with a bit of uh, gum gum while it's still warm, I guess, technically. Now, in many ways, it's a bit frustrating reworking a bike after you've done all this, but it's also not the end of the world. Um, <clears throat> look what I've just found. Oh, drill hole. Interesting. Um, drill hole, uh, old tactic to put more air in, uh, it's not, not a terrible idea but we don't know the jetting of the carbs so a bit of tape over that for now, see if the bike is a bit happier. Um, I've gum gummed the hole in the exhaust so I mean that was such a small hole I wouldn't be too worried about it but this one would make a big difference uh, because at the moment the air it draws in is minimal so that's quite a big hole. Um, I'm going to take that up to see if it seems a bit happier. I doubt that's the, a massive difference, but it's worth seeing. I do want to get to the uh, oil pump and see if it's got an adjustment screw on it. And I probably want to give it one more carb clean just out of curiosity, just in case. It's very quick and easy to do. So I am going to restrip the back of this bike, but I'm going to be very careful with the paintwork. So guys, you can hear the noise in the background. I couldn't do much filming because there were builders in here um, working behind me over there. So um, what you didn't see was me do a second carb clean, um, a much better one actually, a more thorough one. And, um, and I covered the hole in the uh, air box, which made it flow better. It's running beautifully. You'll see the second run now.
Oh, oh, oh.